There's no doubt that there's fun in all this stuff. And if you know the date in December when wacky machines fill the halls of the Carnegie Science Center, you may want to be an engineer too. The first step is you push hydraulic in. There's water and hydraulics, so it's in a really, it's the first lever. And this is a contest for high school students to teach them about engineering and physics. And they build a machine that very convolutedly accomplishes a simple task. It's uh, what was formerly known as the Rube Goldberg Machine Competition. Now it's the Chain Reaction Contraption Competition. Yeah, about 30 teams from schools all around the region design and engineer goofy devices that have to accomplish a task. In 2008, the task was to draw an X and then erase it. And you have to do it with a theme. For instance, the team from Brentwood has chosen a sports theme. It rolls down the track, hit the ping pong paddle, and then top of the ping pong paddle sets another foosball off. It's rolling down all the way down the track. Meanwhile, the team from Bell Vernon has concocted a cooking theme with three chefs and a hostess. The secret ingredient travels through the funnel, down through this tube, and gets us in a catcher in the bottom. And among the others, there were four guys in flannel from Derry. The theme, we were like, oh, pirates. And then we're like, everyone's going to have pirates there. And so we just kind of went without a theme for a while. And at the end, we were thrown about like an Old West theme, and it turned into more of a mining. Uh, the machine starts by you're like turning the key to open the mine, or the mine, and then it uh, moves through. You're gonna go down the mine through these levers that go up and down until you finally get to where you start to mine at the end. This whole 2008 competition was overseen by Erin Whiting, who's a nuclear engineer for Westinghouse when she's not dealing with this contest. I've been involved with it for the seven years it's been going. It's something I really believe in. I think it's good for the kids, and I think that they learn a lot from it. And it seems to be really fun. Like people, The public likes to come and see it, and the kids seem to enjoy what they do. And it can be really frustrating at times, but actually getting here and having a machine that works even part way is just amazing. Uh, it's pretty easy, actually, because for the past month and a half since school started, we've been working on this every day. And the things that they come up with, it's just crazy. Like we ask them to do these things and every year when we're planning it, we think, wow, is this really too difficult for high school kids? And then they're like, no, they'll figure it out. And they always amaze us every time we come here. So it's just great to see the things they think about. How they approach problems different from how older people approach problems is really nice. The first two steps, every time worked. Yeah. Some steps, not so much. Not so much. And then even as of early, like as late as the beginning of the week, we actually changed one step because it just, we tried and tried, and it just didn't work all that well, so we decided we're going to take and remove that and put something that works more consistently. It teaches them about the properties of physics and gravity and how to maintain momentum, and basically it's a fun way to learn about engineering. Uh, we worked our weekends, weekdays after school, my grandpap's workshop, and it was the four of us that designed and built it ourselves without a mentor. Now, sometimes teachers get involved, and Brian Joyce actually uses this as part of his engineering class at Brentwood High. Oh, it's great. It's, uh, it's a great chance for them to go through and, you know, take a look at mechanical engineering and see what, you know, real problem solving is all about. It's supposed to be, like, simple, but then make it hard. I think it's, it's a great design. It's problems always going through and showing up no matter what you do to plan. Uh, little things go wrong, and I think they've learned a whole lot from it. And, it's, it's a fine machine. We also you know, make them stand up in front of people and actually operate the machine and show them what they built. So it gives them a sense of pride in what they've done and also accomplishment and you know, telling people what they've done and explaining what they've done to everyone. But the inertia of the ball going down pulls up on this weight underneath, which gives it enough force to tap the track. I say that engineers make everything we use in this world work right. Like we fix things, we make sure it runs smoothly, we make things run more efficiently, not like this contest. But also like this contest, you, you make things run inefficiently, but you also want your machine to run perfectly. So there's an element of efficiency in that, and you have to work by trial and error and also by calculations to make sure that things work right, and that's really what engineers do in the real world. It, it takes a lot of work, but the results are definitely well worth it. Oh, I love it. I, I... I'd like to go through and build one of these machines myself. I think they should have one for the teachers here, too. It's going against our very nature to do this, but it's a good learning experience. <laughs> I think it's fun. Yeah. I think we all it think it's fun. fun. And the first place prize is an iPod Nano and a Steelers football, and it goes to Derry Area High School. 
a lot of the students that we've had have said they're going on to be engineers in college and to pursue a career in engineering when they're out of college. So that's basically our goal, is to get people interested and get them along that path to see that it's not just people sitting behind a desk not talking to anyone like in Dilbert. <laughs> I, just, I just enjoy seeing the kids go through and, you know, get excited about something that's, you know, going to help them out in their, the course of their academic endeavors. Yeah, we need young engineers. And obviously around here, they can learn a lot from engineers who came before them. The history and the engineering, it's still here. But we also have to remember that Pittsburgh has profited from new ideas and new ways of doing things. Pittsburghers are resilient. They find new things to adapt to and find a new, I suppose, a new frontier. We have to remain curious and smart and clever. We need to continue to push that, that envelope. Whether it's robots or vaccines or video one, games, two, or something we haven't thought of yet, we need to be ready to be ingenious. Everything is engineered. Everything that you see around you. We need to remember the spirit that figures out how to make things and do things and fix things. We need a Ferris wheel. We need to celebrate and honor and appreciate engineers. And in the city of Bridges, this city of engineers, we need to make sure they feel at home. <laughs>